All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Wednesday live stream. So uh, this is um, an odd time to be doing a live stream for us. Usually we do it uh, four or five hours later. But uh, for today, since I have family in town, uh, this is going to be a very early stream, which I can tell because, uh, uh, of course, is uh, we see the people that are flowing in. Not as many as we were used to. But if you're watching this later, it doesn't matter. Uh, we'll do a little Q&A. But uh, this is the information uh, that we have. And what I want to start off with was a, was a pretty good interview. And this is by uh, Jessica uh, from Coin Bureau. And I linked the full video in the description so you can check it out. And you got Raul Powell there on the right. And you got Tim Draper, billionaire investor. Made some pretty good calls back in the day. Got into Microsoft, I believe. Got into Uber. Got into uh, a lot of things. Got into Bitcoin in the uh, 20, 2011, I believe it was. And and uh, it's a pretty good perspective that he has. So this is actually, the video itself is about 30 minutes long. I just wanted to condense it to this, this two and a half minutes of what Tim is talking about. And I actually kind of sped it up because Tim drops talks very slow, which is uh, not a problem. But uh, I just want you to hear the whole thing in a, in, a, in a reasonable amount of time. So listen to what he says about the ecosystem, about Bitcoin and where it comes from. And uh, I can tell you that uh, this is a pretty good uh, take. So uh, let's just uh, take a listen here. Make sure you can hear it. And uh, again, about two minutes or so. Well, I'm, I'm really pretty excited about stacks. Um, and the reason is, here's, here's the way I looked at it. Um, I watched the internet boom and bust and boom again. And, um, and I watched how, <clears throat> how the software industry grew even before that. And Microsoft created this platform. And then everybody created all this software on that platform. And that platform included, and then all these, all these little companies created clip art and little games and uh, paint programs and all sorts of things. And then there was this one word perfect that started to really rock. And Microsoft looked over there and then they created Word. And then there was another one called Lotus 123 that was a spreadsheet and it was booming. And Microsoft looked over there and created Excel. And then they saw PowerPoint rising and they quickly bought it before it got too big. And they tried to get into it with money uh, and they realized they couldn't do that. They probably eventually will have to buy into it too. But <clears throat> it's um, what happened was there was a platform and they let people do all sorts of things. And then they chose the things that really mattered. So I'm seeing sort of the same thing happen with Bitcoin as a as a platform. Um, sure, all the a lot of the experimentation went on Ethereum and Solana and Tezos and whatever else. Tezos. But now people are going, hmm, okay. So NFTs are a big deal. So we're going to create ordinals on, on Bitcoin. Oh, okay. So DeFi is a big deal. Okay, well, we're going to have DeFi on Bitcoin. Okay, smart contracts are a big deal. We're going to move smart contracts to Bitcoin. I think that's happening. And I think there is a little bit, it's starting to happen in consolidation around Bitcoin because as a platform, because um, I don't know if you noticed, but it, when Bitcoin was at $40,000 the last time, Ethereum was at 3000 And now Bitcoin's at $40,000 and Ethereum's at $2,000. Um, and all the way down, uh, the rest of the tokens are also um, smaller relative, most of them are smaller relative to Bitcoin, the differential. So I think that there is this slow, steady movement toward the, all the important applications going on Bitcoin. So I'm kind of looking, I, most of what I've been investing in, although, I mean, we'll look at all sorts of things, um, have been things that start to move the important applications over to Bitcoin. So I think that- All right, so yeah. So I thought it was interesting because it's perspective looking back. And I remember like when I got into, in, well, into the internet itself, I remember everybody told me that, uh, you know, you gotta get on this, this platform, it's called Friendster. And it's going to be fantastic. It's a new social media platform. And everyone was there for a while. And then, of course, it's, uh, it just kind of dissolved. And then all of a sudden, there was this thing called Facebook. And everybody kind of went over there. And then all of a sudden, there was these other social media platforms like uh, Twitter and Instagram and now TikTok. And like you just kind of see like, like, like an evolution. But um, the, the smartest thing that Facebook ever did was realize that, hey, all these things that are going on around us, we can't just build our way out of it. Let's just acquire everything. And that's essentially what it is. When he talks about consolidation, I can see where, where he's coming from and why he uh, thinks he'll actually do that. But the thing is, is that we don't know. We know that there's a, there can be a consolidation and it makes a lot of sense. However, the thing that you have to realize is that how long is it going to take? Is this going to be like a two-year thing where Bitcoin takes everything? It'll be a 10-year thing or a 20 or a 50-year thing. It's the timing 
that we get all wrong. And before we go forward, uh, this was again like a great clip from, uh, and Jessica did a great job for the interview. You can watch the, the, the full episode. There's a link in the description right to the, the, the video directly. And that just sounds great. So what I wanna talk about is, I wanna talk about the, uh, the Bitcoin ecosystem. Then we're gonna talk about a Cardano ecosystem. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about gaming. So before we, we, we jump all you know, into the Bitcoin ecosystem, take this with a grain of salt. Tim Draper is a great investor, but I will tell you right now, Every great investor has their mess ups. No one is 100%. And when you have like investors like, like Tim, some things just don't work out. So when he talks about these things, just like, well, is it all going to be Bitcoin? Will it always be? Just remember, Tim's had some pretty wacky uh, predictions. In 2018, he said, hey, Bitcoin will be 250000 by end of 2022. And on November 16th, 2022, when FTX was, was collapsing, he said, yeah, Bitcoin can still hit 250K in that year of 2022. Then he revised it and said, well, maybe 2023. And then he's like, okay, well, 2023 is not over. But if it is, doesn't admit it, it'll be next year. So like, just take it with a grain of salt. I can see where he's coming from. And that is why, if you've watched the video, I put this out like about a, three weeks ago or so, it was all the different cryptos that I own. I talked about this, Stacks. And Stacks was... It was a reasonable play because I don't know what's going to happen and what's going to build, but Stacks is essentially a layer two solution, which means it uses the Bitcoin ecosystem or the, the, the underlying foundation. It builds on top of it and it's for smart contract functionality. functionality. And I was turned on to, to Stacks back in 2021 when they partnered up with Miami and Mayor Suarez when they made Miami coin. They did the same thing in Colorado as well. And I thought, well, this is going to do pretty well. And it did. And then it crashed because that's how it is. Technology has to catch up. So with stacks, I mean, I've been stacking stacks da, 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 for quite some time. And over the last year, people say, well, what? I mean, is that good? It's done 512%. That's roughly what Solana has done. And Solana has been the darling of the ecosystem or the entire crypto sphere. Everybody's been talking about it, but I'm looking at stacks right now, 512%. Let me make sure that I'm not just blowing smoke because I don't want people to say, well, it's actually blah, blah, blah. All right. So Cardano in a year, okay, you got me, 536%. <laughs> so if we're taking a look at it, you really love Bitcoin, you really love where, you know, you're in it for the tech, bro, great. Maybe you should take a look at the ecosystem. Then of course, when he's talking about inscriptions, don't forget about, you know, ordinals. And this is the token already, did pretty good. And it's very early. You know, it's only been out for roughly 30, 45 days. And it's done 120%. So these are some to take a look at as far as the ecosystem. Now, there is a downside to all that, especially with inscriptions. We saw it on Bitcoin. We saw it on Polygon. We just recently saw it at Avalanche. We didn't really see it on Near, which is kind of surprising. But when you have inscriptions, when you have these ordinals, essentially NFTs, and they can write into the blockchain itself, you're going to have this. And this is the average transaction fee. And this is why the Bitcoin maximalists, maximalists are so ticked off. Look at these prices. I can understand in 2021, when it was just a frenzy. It was the tippy top of the market, April 2021. The fees to transfer Bitcoin were outrageous, $62. And then of course we had a little pump right here. And, oh, in May, 2023, interesting. And then with, of course that was, uh, now we have the ordinals, let me blow this up so you can see it. Uh, my Bitcoin is essentially stuck on Coinbase because of this. Right now, you're looking at a couple of days ago, it was $37. Then it dropped to 25 and it dropped 28. So the narrative of like Bitcoin is used for transactions, unless we get another layer two solution like Lightning, it ain't happening. So again, the ecosystem, I think, can do pretty well. We'll see how well it goes. I don't think the technology has caught up where everybody's building on stacks and everybody's using ordinals and everybody's using Lightning because that's not true. But there is a potential. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comment section. And also, this will kind of come in line with uh, uh, the title and the thumbnail today. This was a memorandum from the SEC. And of course, everybody's excited about the uh, Bitcoin ETF. Hope it gets done. I'm not too sure. Everybody else tells me it's 99.9% .9 in the bag. So, all right. But these types of things do make me feel quite positive. This is a memorandum. This is uh, Dave Remis, Office of Market Supervision. Division of Trading and Markets in the SEC. And this was actually, what's the date today? Oh, this is yesterday, December 19, 2023. 
BlackRock got to sit down with the SEC for the umpteenth time, and they also got to sit down with Joseph Kusick, Jonathan Kane, Gian Bui, nailed it, Ellison Doyle for the NASDAQ stock market. So essentially they're like, hey, when this gets listed, you know, here we go, let's all just have a powwow. So I think it's a step in the right direction. Hopefully the spot Bitcoin ETF uh, gets approved because when it does, you'll see uh, a pretty high market appreciation. Now the question is, is this a buyer rumor sell the news? I'm not so sure. I think the money flowing in over time probably could be in the short term, you might see a retraction, but an ETF is positive. And again, I don't really care if it gets approved now or it gets approved later. That would be January or in March or even next year. In 20, I mean, in 2024, later in 2024. It's not a question of if it gets approved. It's a question of when. I'm just uh, not a big believer in Gary Gensler. Anyhow, let me just think about that. And to finish up, there's a couple of things. First of all, Cardano. I know some people hate Cardano. Some people love Cardano. I have a, we have a Cardano uh, stake pool. There's links in the description. You can check it out. But uh, this is, I think, pretty big news. Now, we know that on Solana, they have Helium, and it's done amazing uh, because of the a great, I mean, whatever they're, the, the marketing over there, they, they partnered up with, with a college university. Uh, it's going across the United States. But with World Mobile, it's a different route, and they're trying to connect the unconnected, and this was pretty big. They just announced this, I think this was this morning, uh, the collaboration with Vodacom using Aerostat Tech to help connect the unconnected. Here's a little secret. Uh, I talked to Mickey yesterday, and he told me about it. And I thought it was interesting because he goes, you know, the same guys that are, you know, we're in talks with and have a deal with right now for the aerostats are the same guys that were laughing in our faces two years ago. I was like, oh, pretty, it's, you know, amazing. He goes, yeah. But the question is, who's Vodafone or Vodacom? Vodacom, South African mobile community age company providing voice messaging data and services to 130, 130 million customers across Africa. They are a subset of Vodafone which is a British multinational telecommunications company, registered office and global headquarters in Berkshire, England, operates in Asia, Africa, Europe, and Oceania. And the net income is 12.34 billion, revenue of 45.71 billion. And those guys are pretty much doing like a little trial run with these aerostats, because why is it great? It's great because they can have connecti connectivity and they can cut down their costs massively for the places that they can't get it. So again, this is one of those things that uh, can actually do. Now, some people say, well, Rob, what about Starlink? Because Starlink is coming on and Elon is going to take over the world. Here's the thing. In a lot of countries, they're not paying 600 bucks for the massive amount of actual hardware that you need for Starlink individually, and they're not paying 120 bucks a month. There's a reason why they're trying to connect the unconnected. And they actually do partner up with Starlink for a backhaul for their data, uh, World Mobile Token and uh, Starlink. So there is also that. And of course, it just talks about the partnership. The aim of the collaboration is to trial our Aerostat tech with Vodacom's mobile spectrum and extensive resource to help solve the challenge of connecting the unconnected regions of Mozambique. And I can just tell you right now, if this happens in Mozambique to like, hey, this works pretty well, which I think they're probably going to say, what does that mean? Well, they're going to probably roll it out to the a lot of different sections of uh, Africa. And then of course, now Vodafone's like, hey, you know what? There's a lot of places we can't reach into and it's way expensive. Let's just use these aerostats because we were laughing at them before, let's use it now. And of course, with all this talk, what does that mean for World Mobile Token? Nothing, not much, a whopping 5% increase. And if you're looking for something to do your own research and look at, just wanted to let you know, the market cap of this is 92 million, 505,840, not even 100 million. Now, does Rob talk about this of the goodness of his heart? Absolutely not. I own World Mobile Token. I own a lot of it, matter of fact. I got in two years ago. So when I talk about something, just know that I own it. And if you think that I won't dump on you, you're incorrect. Uh, I will, but I do like this project. I'm just putting it out there that I think this is a great project and this is what's happening. So. There is that, and then lastly, lastly, <laughs> I keep saying lastly, it's not. There's two things to talk about. I need your help. And the help is, I wanna find some of the best wallets as far as ease of use, setup, and functionality. 
And I, I'm looking for hot wallets. Now, as we know on this channel, I'm a big believer in Tangem. That's why there's a big screen underneath there. No, Tangem doesn't pay me a dime, but I do use affiliate links. So if you want to pick up a Tangem for Christmas, it's a great stocking stuffer and you get 10% off. And if you can't stand me or using affiliate links, just go right to tangent.com. It's a great, it's a great web, it's a great product. So as far as like that, that's great, but what about hot wallets? So right now I put out a tweet and I said, hey, what hot wallet do you usually use? Which one are your favorite? Personally, this is the ones that I use. I use Phantom, Titus Wallet, MetaMask, and Nami. And I got a lot of people telling me a lot of different things about which ones are the best. Uh, Vanessa here is his Sonar Wallet, Exodus, um, Soul Flare Wallet, uh, at my, well, that's from me, okay. Zerion, Kepler Wallet. Uh, Retros is Pally Wallet. I'm just kind of getting a gauge because I want to do a deep dive into like the top five or seven hot wallets. So if you use a hot wallet, and when I say a hot wallet, I mean that's one that's constantly connected to the internet. So either it's in your browser or it's on your phone, drop that in the comment section and then I'll do a deep dive video and we'll go over it because as we roll this stuff out, I think everybody should have a cold storage wallet. I think it should probably be easy, tangent, but I think they should have a hot wallet when they do want to do some like, you know, degenerate type of things and move things around. So I need your help. Please tell me know uh, what those wallets are so I can do a deep dive. And then of course, there's a link in the description uh, if you want to check out those wallets that I use. Titus is, it's super brain dead easy. Phantom as well. And I, I like those for NFTs. Um, and then also because Christmas is coming up, I want to do a giveaway and the giveaway I want to do is a specific game. So again, the goal of this channel is to get people and educate them about crypto, but I needed to make it super simple, especially for the moms and the dads and the grandparents and everybody else and just make it brain dead simple. So, um, as far as web three gaming, my narrative is, I think you've got, you've got AI web three gaming indexes. That'll be the next narrative for the next bull run. And the reason why I think of it is because, look, if you take a look at like global box, I mean, just movies in general, first of all, the movies making these days kind of suck, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, you can see that the revenue is roughly 10 billion. Well, that's in 2021. It may be 20 billion now, but it, it topped out in 2019 at 39 billion. Gaming revenue in 2021 was 93 billion mobile. Console was 50 billion and PC was 37 billion. I didn't really know that until I started getting the Web3 Gaming that gaming trumps everything as far as like movies. Crazy, right? And here's some further breakdown. This is from Exploding Topics, also from uh, Statista. How many gamers are there out there? I didn't know this either. Uh, number of gamers, and gamers means not like not core, not like hardcore nerd gamers who sit around and, sorry, some of you guys, sit around and play games, you know, 24 seven, and that's all they do. I'm just talking about people like have a random game on their on their phone when they wanna kill some time, like me. So in 2023, oh, this is the increase. There's a total of 3.2 billion. There's only like eight, roughly 7.9 billion people on the planet. So, you know, roughly 40% uh, well, <laughs> are gamers. 2024, you'll see a little bit of an increase of 100 million. And then also what's interesting is that the age groups, I can get the 18 to 34, but then you, you go down, you get to my age group, 45 to 54, 12%, and even 55 to 64, 9%. And then, uh, but the question is then like, what kind of games are people playing? These action games and shooter games, which I don't really get into because I got stuff to do and I don't wanna, I can't say waste time, they are pretty fun. And I really need to pick those up actually, but casual, is clear in a way the best, the biggest winner. 63% of respondents say that they play casual games, which is almost 2 billion people. So here's what I want you guys to do. I'm gonna do a giveaway. And that giveaway is a Benji Pass. Benji Pass is this game, Benji Bananas. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it came out in 2013. It's got 50 million downloads. It's going from web two to web three. And I'm going to give away these passes so you can earn the Benji token. Now here's the thing. The game is super simple. I linked, there's a link in the description you can download to your phone. It goes on iPhone or Android. And yes, before you bombard me, it's free to play. It's fun. And if you wanna just, you know, waste some time, go ahead. I know there's gonna be some people like, Rob, I don't play games because I'm an adult. Cool, don't play the game. But if you're like me, you know, like every so often, you're like, you know, you're sitting around waiting for somebody and you're like, what can I, you know, instead of just going on Twitter constantly like I do, you can just play a little bit of game. That's the game right there. 
we'll do the giveaway this week at some point, but I need you guys to download it, play the game. It's free. No, they didn't pay me, but they are going to give me three of those passes to give away. Maybe five. I'm going to connive them, but that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive, but if you got to take off, take off. Thank you for stopping by. I do appreciate you. Now